Hey folks! In this video we're going to make a fancy inlaid picture frame using some maple, some paduk and some yellow heart. Now the first thing I have to do is square off this piece of wood so I can get nice cuts on the bandsaw later. I was starting out with some pretty rough cuts of maple so I had to make it neat before I could use it. And for some reason I had some lapse of judgement or something and I grabbed literally the worst plane I own while my bedrocks looked on. I'm sure they weren't judging me. Even Ash came to check on what I was doing. You can't be hearing all the plane shavings, Ash. I'm sure he wasn't judging me either. And eventually, using the worst plane I own, I actually finished squaring this off. Now we need to make some measurements and then we can cut it. Now to the big bandsaw! Now let's cut some paduk. Here's our paduk. But you might notice that it's not as long as the pieces of maple that it's going to be glued to. But don't worry, I have a plan for that. I cut the ends at an angle, because it makes for a better joint than flat end grain on flat end grain. And then I turned to super glue to put it all together, because this doesn't have to be a structural joint, it just has to hold together long enough for me to finish the pieces. And to finish them I send them for the drum sander. Alright, we're ready to glue it all up, and this looks all complicated, but it's really simple. It's just cooking paper that's supposed to keep the glue from getting everywhere. Three days later... Let's see how it came out. This came out really good, very little glue spilled out, so it just needs a little bit of cleanup. Alright, let's start working on our inlay pieces then. I calculated how many I need to fill each side of the frame, and it's a whole bunch. But the trick to doing that is you make a long strip with the pattern, and then you chop it up horizontally. This way you don't have to set each little piece individually. I made a new test sample to make absolutely sure, because I wasn't entirely happy with this one. I felt it needed a little bit of color, so I'm going to give a little bit of green with this piece of poplar. I think that's going to make it even more interesting. So we are going to make a yellow heart piece, a poplar piece, yellow heart, and paduk. So we have to go cut some more paduk. Cutting all that paduk previously gummed up the blade, something fierce. Alright, here's our wood, roughly cut to the necessary sizes, and now I'm gonna run it through the drum sander to make sure it is exactly the size I need it to be. Also check this out. These filters were brand new when I started, this is what they look like new. Now look at them now. 
So if you ever work with this kind of stuff, absolutely, please wear breathing protection. You don't want this crap in your lungs. All right, let's glue it in place. The next day. And once again for the thickness sander. This is the actual speed this runs. Normally I don't like to use the router in the house because it's tremendously messy and incredibly noisy, but the weather has been terrible for the past few days, so the show must go on. <laughs> I've made a little mock-up piece that I'm going to test first to make sure all my dimensions and positionings are correct because I only get one shot at the real thing. So let's cut this one and see how on target we are. With that taken care of and the tremendous mess it made cleaned up, it was time to work on the inlay pieces. First splitting the main piece in half, and then cutting all the individual pieces that are gonna go in the channel we just cut with the router. And putting it all together. As you can imagine, this took some time. Much, much later. Three days later, we have to flatten the wood one last time still. Then I masked the inlaid side so it would be protected from any damage while handling this thing. And then it came time to cut a rabbit on one side so I can create a recession where the picture itself can be inserted. After many measurements and calculations and experimentation, I arrived to the size that I wanted to cut it. So, I went for it. Now to glue it, I'm going to use my tape hinge trick and a whole lot of glue and clamps. The next day. I believe that modern glue is plenty strong to hold this type of joint for lightweight applications, but still I decided to reinforce the joint. And for that I'm going to use this fancy jig that allows me to cut a slot in the corner of the frame, and then I'm going to put a piece of padut there to create a much stronger joint. Now I'm gonna make a whole bunch of little splines of padouk. And then we glue them the slots we cut. Now that these are in place and the glue is dry, we cut off the excess. To make the piece that is going to hold the glass and the picture and everything in the frame, I'm going to use these pieces that I cut from the back. And this can be done very simple, so I'm actually going to use just a half lap joint. I need some measurements, and then some more cutting. Now the way these go together is very simple. I'll cut about half the depth of the wood and uh, about this length, so the pieces one overlap with the other, they will be glued, and then they fit here, and that's gonna be good. After I've done some math to take into account the thickness of the blade, and made a test piece, it was time to cut the real pieces. Now 
Now that the pieces are properly cut, I just have to glue them. And this should be really easy. Now after the glue has set overnight, we can take the clamps off. I didn't have a piece of clear glass big enough for this, so I had to go buy some. And if anybody from that big box home improvement store is watching, I stood around for 15 minutes after asking multiple times for assistance with their glass cutting department and nobody ever came to help us. So do better next time, guys. Thankfully I can cut my own glass, but it would have been nicer not to have to haul home these huge panes of glass. I'll be holding everything from the back with screws, so I had to drill some holes. And I also discovered that this dust extractor thing that I made for the sanding drums works great for pretty much anything else in the drill press. For varnishing I used some spray lacquer because it gave the colors that I liked the most on all these very combinations of woods and it is a very good finish. Also it's very very easy to do. To hang the frames I'll be using some eye hooks and some steel cable. I sat the frame down for 5 seconds to go fetch a screwdriver and when I returned there was a cat on it already. What are you doing, boo? Do you like the frame? Ta-da! There it is! Um, this was a lot of work, took quite some time to get it done actually, but uh, it is there. And uh, I admit that in the beginning when I started working on it, I wasn't sure I was going to like the pattern, but now that I see it finished, if I might say so, I think it came out pretty good. <laughs> so the other two I still have another use for that, but this one is the one I'm going to use to finish the video and it's the one that's hung here with my uh, geese of Maydoom. So thank you so much for watching, if you have any questions and comments leave them below, and I'll see you next time.